Welcome to Shotgun Story, the podcast that has conversations with indie creators about music, meaning, and the point of it all, so that you may be inspired by the journeys of other artists who are doing it for themselves, and maybe gain a little more understanding as to why it matters quite so much that you keep creating. I'm at Quilla at a, one of the best music festivals in this country, Millie Pop. He's a poet, a rapper, a vocalist, and a producer, and his heart is in it. And so I'm so excited he's in studio with us today. Hi. Hello, 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 Tori. Oh, it's so <laughs> nice to see your face. It's been so long. I know, it's been years. It's been a long time, yeah. I want to start right at the beginning. Mm hmm why music? How did it all begin for you? I always tell younger musicians, if you want to get into music, the first question, I think the most important question you must ask yourself is why, you know? And then what follows after is, cool, oh, what? What about music? What, what kind of music? Where are you going to do it? With who and how, you know? But I think the why is the most important thing because... I think people just want to become musicians and they don't know why. Mm. I mean, I started as a rapper in 97, 98. I never thought of music. I never thought, oh, one day I'd be in a band. I was never exposed to that kind of stuff. I had never seen a band in my life except on TV. I never thought of being an instrumentalist. I just was interested in rap because of what I was seeing on TV. Mm. And I just liked the art form and I loved that it could improve my vocabulary. So yeah. I was like, oh, actually, I'm going to use this for my vocab, but as well, I used to use rap to study in high school. You know, oh, I, would, wow. <laughs> I would be like, hmm, I don't feel like reading, but I'll read and put everything kind of like in a rap verse. So it's easier for me to remember during exam time. So I still don't know why <laughs> I, do, I do music. Like There are reasons. I love music. It's definitely my passion. It's definitely aligned with my purpose. Mm. It's one of those things. It's like, why life? It's unknown, but it's also known. You yeah. know, you also realize that there are so many things that we don't know. We know a lot, but there's so much more we don't know. For me, why music is a bit of that. It's a bit of, I actually don't know. Yeah. But there is something, whether it's a voice inside of my head, whether it's instinct or intuition, or there, it's just something that makes me want to do music. Mm, you know, absolutely. and like I said, it's definitely a laugh. And it's definitely something I'm passionate about. If I don't do music, I go crazy, you know. So now if you were to look at your career as a timeline, what five highlights would you give to a listener who is not familiar with your music? Being part of a scene that was kind of like emerging, 2004, recording our first album as quite an experience in 2005 at M2, I don't remember if it was M2 or M1 Studios. I think I was 19, 20, you know, and just being in facilities like m1 studios and you're like whoa this is where you know all the people that we like all the musicians that i like have recorded here mm -hmm. you know and we're there and a few months later we had the national arts festival in grahamstown mm -hmm. and then we leave the national arts festival we go to cape verde you know you're like this is the first time i'm traveling out of the country this is wild we just released this music and a few months later at cape town jazz fest so as those, there are those kind of highlights where you're like, oh, damn, I'm in the middle of France. Oh, how did this happen? You know, kind of vibe. Okay, we're in Vienna fighting at the airport, talking wow. about fuck this band. You know what? Ah, we done. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> in, the, in the middle of the airport, you know, and coming back from Bosnia. I've never yeah. thought of going to Bosnia. And this is the feeling I've been getting nowadays where I'm like, I feel like going to places where people don't go, you know? Yeah. I just want to go to like Romania, you know, just because nobody goes to Romania or thinks about it. I mean, I'm sure people do, but <laughs> you know, I, I miss that, that vibe. And are those, all the places that you went, was that touring with Kwani Experience? Yeah. Let's talk a bit about Kwani Experience for a moment. You say you joined a band in 2004. Was that Kwani Experience? Yeah. Okay. You guys have been together and not together and together and not together and you <laughs> relaunched this year, yeah. right? Late last, last year, year. Yeah, at Afropunk. But you also have started making quietly some solo things, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I have. <laughs> <laughs> I have for, for a few years now. Okay. I've been studio hopping for, apart from going experience, I find myself in 
a random studio. Okay, I'm in the studio. I'm, I, I would say I'm a bit of a studio head, but I'm not as obsessed with like studio life. You know, there are people who I look at and I'm like, this person is a nerd. This is, mm-hmm. this. I'm not at that level. I just love being in the studio. I just love the process. I love being part of the process or watching it happen unfold in front of me. Mm-hmm. So I started messing around with production actually in 2006, mm. 2006, 2005, where I lived with my band members. Um, we lived in a house in Bears Valley and one of our friends, Shafiq, Shafiq had like a Cubase setup mm. and he he was cool with it. He was just like, if he's not working, he's like, yeah, do whatever you want to do with it. So that's why I started kind of messing around with like, digital audio workstations and and I was like, oh, I actually love this. I I actually have a knack for this. I, I'm actually kind of good at it. Mm. So from that time until, um, I think I started the first two songs that I did for my solo project were in 2008 because people were always like, when are you going to do a solo? When are you going to do it? I never had solo ambitions. I never, I never ever thought of it. For me, I was like, hey, I'm in a band. It's working. This is what I want to invest my time in mm-hmm. um but in 2008 i was like okay cool let me i was starting to get into reason uh the program and i was just started sequencing some stuff with one of my band members and i was like oh this is kind of cool mm-hmm. i actually like this so it took me years to kind of have like a proper studio practice yeah so to say to be like okay you know what i'm actually gonna do this full time i'm gonna wake up um, you know to a point where you, you dream of arrangements in your dreams. You're like, Oh, okay. That's how I'm going to, okay. That's how the guitar should be. You know, you get arrangement Amazing. ideas in your dreams. You're just like, mm, okay, that's how I can approach it. I read something today by, I think Jeff Bezos, Amazon, mm. where he says he's going to be an expert, but he's going to keep the beginner mentality, you know, which for me, my studio practice right now is very, much, oh, I'm going to be an expert, but I'm going to keep my beginner's mindset. Something like that. Mm. So for me, my studio practice is more like how I started rapping. When I started rapping, I was doing it every single minute. You know, I was in, mm. in class. Instead of studying, I'm writing. You know, I, I remember one, one of the exams that I wrote in matric. I didn't know shit. I think it was ma- mathematics. Yeah. But now I'm, I'm starting to love math because I'm seeing the similarities between music and math. Yeah. You know, so that's the only, I'm loving math to music. So I used to eat and breathe rap. I used to rap any time, any day. I was writing. So that's kind of like where I'm at right now with like production. And I love this. It's a beautiful place. Yeah. You know, for me, it's a beautiful place. If I'm not doing it, I go crazy. I'm really excited to hear some of the stuff that you're recording. Soon. What drives you to keep creating? I think it's the drive itself. <laughs> you know, I can say what's happening around me drives me to create. Mm-hmm. Uh, but sometimes it's not that. Most times I just feel music just flows through me. Yeah. Sitting or lying down and the melody just comes yeah. to you and it's just infectious and you want to put it down. You feel the need to put it down or you feel the duty kind of to be like, cool, I'm going to record this. And you don't have to think about it like, hey, wait, by the way, I'm a musician. Oh, here's a melody. You just, I'm not sure what really drives me and if it's the same as what inspires me. But mm. I, again, it's one of those questions where I'm like, this thing is a mystery. You know, it's I just keep making music and I feel blessed to always be inspired. You know, I, I feel like I've, I haven't had a writer's blog or a creative blog in a long time. And and if I'm not writing, I'm not writing yeah. to me. It's never like, Oh, I'm not writing. Oh, why am I not writing? It's like, I'm not writing cause I'm not writing, you mm. know, but there are other things to do. If I'm not writing, I'm editing. If I'm not editing, I'm working on something else. So, there's the drive is there. I think the drive is just like a, a natural phenomenon. It's it's just like it's the drive that keeps everything growing every day. It's, it's that order, you know. It's I'm, I feel like I'm part of the order to be like create. Yeah, you are here to create music. Uh, also, you know, I, I've come to understand that it's a gift to be able to make music. Yeah, uh, music itself is a gift. If you li- for whoever loves music, listening to music, consuming music is a gift. But mm-hmm. to be able to make it is very special, and it's like. It's crazy because it it took me a long time to be like, this is actually special, you know, to be able to make something that people enjoy. I've heard that people who don't like music, but I've never actually met anyone who doesn't like music, you know. Yeah. So I think it's just a natural drive as a musician, as an artist to keep creating. I don't separate creation, creator, creating. 
It's wonderful. It feels so uncomplicated. Exactly. It's easy. It's effortless, but you have to put effort. Absolutely. But, but you can't force it as well. It's the same. It's like music is life, you know. I think there are laws of music. I just don't know what they are. <laughs> you know, I think there's laws to rhythm, laws to melody, definitely laws to harmony, discord, etc., etc. You know, there are certain mathematics again. It's beautiful. It's effortless. It's organic. It just comes and you allow it and you know that it's not yours. It's yours because it comes to you, but then you release it and it's not yours anymore. I consistently question who am I to make music, right? Question my worth in relation to making music. Mm -hmm. And when I hear you talk, there is no question. You are a musician. End of story. And that's what I mean by uncomplicated. It's wonderful and incredibly refreshing. Yeah, definitely. I, I think I need to get some tips from you. <laughs> from you. It's so exciting. What sort of subject matter do you generally deal with in your songs? Definitely social commentary. Definitely politics. I mean, I came to a point where I was like, whoa, my music is really getting political but i know it's a south african way mm. politics are part of our everyday life also i know that if you don't take part and i'm not saying you need to to be a politician if you don't engage mm. with politics politics will engage you somehow absolutely you know at what whatever level you are spirituality i write about that but it's never for me i wouldn't say it's totally planned it's just if i feel like whoa i need to say something about this you know, I'll get a rhythm or it's, again, I'll get a dream. It's that. The answer to this question is an answer that I think almost became a cliche where musicians say they write about life. And it's true. I write about life. I write about what comes up and needs a musical outlet, you know, and yeah. comes to me as, as someone that has, or as this machine that has all the features that can communicate this or express it. When you grow and you realize this is what you're meant to do, you want to write from a place of no ego. You want to write from a place of no limits. You, you know, you, you want to write from a place of there's a purpose to this. There's a meaningfulness. There's value to this thing. Someone is going to listen to this. Mm. And I guess, you know, it's, it comes with experience as well, where you, you listen to a recording and you're like, ah, I could have done that better. Yeah. Now it's going to be out there for the rest of your life. You know, yeah. then you become more intentional in your writing because you know it's going to be out there for as long as that recording is there. Yeah. And who knows, the recording might disappear and reemerge after 80 years. It's still there, you know. Mm -hmm. So I write about life. I love it. <laughs> and I mean, you're as well as a vocalist and rapper, you're also an instrumentalist. You play the synth and percussion. And Sometimes. 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 I've never seen myself as an instrumentalist. Yeah. Except for my voice. I'm, a, I'm primarily a vocalist. When you write, do you start with the words or do you mess around with the melody first or mm. is it a combination? It's a combination. Mm. It really depends. Sometimes it starts with a melody. Sometimes it starts with a rhythm mm. and I write to the rhythm, mm. you know, because syllables, for instance, have a rhythm to them. So for me, if, if I'm do, 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 if I come up with a rhythm, yeah. I'm like, Oh, okay, I can write something that goes with that. Or it can just be a melody. It can just start with a phrase, you know, and I'm like, oh, I love this phrase. Uh, sometimes the song just comes complete. But I think at the core of it, it's my voice. Because mm -hmm. I'm a vocalist, I think I, I work around my voice. No matter how it starts, I always go back to the voice. And I may create the music first and then write later and then go back again to the music to work around the voice. Whether it starts with the voice or not, it's all, it always goes back to the voice. And I'm lucky to be reminded all the time that I'm actually a vocalist. You know, mm -hmm. there are times where I'll, I'll work on a song and I'm like, oh, I'd love to have horns here. But that's just a textural thing. That's mm -hmm. like just having a different voice to a song. Or, but I know that I can also do it with my voice. You know, I can sing those lines. I can you know, whatever riff you're playing on the guitar, I can try emulate it. Might yeah. not be the same. You might actually find that you love the texture of the voice better than the texture the guitar would have played. I love being a vocalist because yeah. there are so many things the voice can do. I listen to different vocalists all the time. I'm just always amazed by what the human voice can do. I really think the human voice is underrated. Mm -hmm. I don't think singers are underrated. I think people love singers. People relate to singers. People can resonate. People need singers. Mm -hmm. People need poets. People need rappers. The voice is underrated. Like socks. Socks are underrated. <laughs> <laughs> so my creation process is that. It's whatever comes 
first and then we just hoy and yeah. then we you know just the listening exactly it's the listening i wanted to study sound engineering mm. and i you know they audition you some schools audition you first well the one that i went to was a very short audition mm. where they test your ears be like okay are you tone deaf <laughs> or not you know they be like what is this is this high pitch yeah that's high i think to be a good musician you have to be a good listener mm. and it can come at practice it's probably at the foundation of being a brilliant musician and that's a great piece of advice my husband will thank you <laughs> do you collaborate much i do i do collaborate i have a couple of collaborations now of a couple of features i've kind of shelved because mm. i have this deadline this recording deadline i do collaborate i enjoy collaborating we were supposed to do a song in 2013 the time is now <laughs> yeah 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 i i love collaborating i love collaborations across different aspects of of, of my life mm. not just in music i think it's necessary yeah you know because even when you're doing music by yourself you are it is kind of a collab- collaboration with yourself <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> And now when you're not collaborating with yourself and you're collaborating with someone else are there any challenges uh, for you personally Yeah I mean I've come across challenges I have a project with the Tokyo based drama mm. who I met on Instagram years ago and I loved the stuff he was posting and I mm. said to him look man we've been following each other why don't we do something and he was like yeah why not you know one of the challenges with that collab has been the language barrier. It is a different world, it's a different market. They do things differently. In other markets for instance, they release on Fridays because this is when songs go into playlists, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But in Japan they release on Mondays. Interesting. I'm not sure if that was just our release, but I found it interesting that they do things differently. Yeah. I've never been to Japan. I haven't come across a lot of challenges in terms of collaborating. Well, working in a band situation, I definitely say the challenges are knowing when to stay in your lane. Uh-huh. Knowing when to shut up. Knowing when to push or assert yourself when the need arises to assert yourself. So staying in your lane can be challenging, compromising can be challenging, you know, mm. deciding okay, you know what? I'm not going to get into this. Cool, let it go. It's fine. It's it is what it is. When you are working with people, you're working with personalities. Everybody has to allow everybody to be themselves. you know and sometimes you have to do the allowing <laughs> much more than the the others in my pen in one experience I was just I'm writing the raps that's it mm-hmm. you know but it evolved into other things where now I have to okay kind of like oversee certain aspects of production especially with the later songs not necessarily produce cuz I I you know the pen has had producers I can see times where there was no need for a producer. Yeah. You know, so for me, I would say those are the challenges if you're working with someone in a country where English is not the medium yeah. of instruction, it can be um, really challenging. And like I said, it's, it's something that I never thought of. Yeah, I always wanted to do something in Japan and then I was like, "Oh, okay. It still is a problem." Yeah. You know? But that's so brave to approach someone on Instagram and say hey let's do a collab it's brave and it is super cool it'd be nice to hear some of that stuff yeah i'll send you yeah please do also what you were saying now about allowing everybody space would that be the one of the tips you'd give someone on how to be a good collaborator those would be some of the tips but uh, but collaborate with people who are aligned to your work who are aligned to what you're doing mm. sometimes there's no need for collaboration sometimes you can just be friends and not have to work together you know yeah because we are not me- meant to work together mm. if your heart tells you to work with someone do it mm. you know i think a big part of the creative process is following your heart yeah you can follow your brain i've done some really one or two cringe worthy <laughs> collaborations that i listen to and i'm like what was i doing yeah you know so you're a dad mhm do you think that's had any impact on your career for sure it's had an impact on my life positive impact on my life mostly on my career it's i think being a father helps you zoom into yourself mm. um and we think we give kids life but they also give us life mm. it's like there's this exchange you know where you give you know you give birth to someone that didn't give birth to him but in a way energetically yeah. you know so it it has had an impact that impact of me zero, zooming or zeroing in on myself and just being more responsible being more calm just being knowing that I'm actually not living for me but yeah. for someone else 
that looks up to me. So, you know, I have to do things differently, you know, because kids definitely do follow your, your lead. You, a child can be their own person and have their own personality, but they follow your lead. Mm. They see you. you. Even when you think they don't, they feel you. They can feel when shit is unwell at home. They know when it's when it's well. They they emulate a lot of things that we do. So it's best to be at your most authentic self and at your best. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? To not not to say, yeah, your kids should see you mad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so they know. Oh, okay, I get mad too. Oh, yeah. okay, cool. But I think them seeing you at your best. Sometimes your most times. Your best is just giving them love. Yeah. Just showering them with unconditional love all the damn time. You know, that's it. You know, there's more, obviously, but I think... That's the most important bit. Love is so important, you know. Yeah, big time. And uh, have you been tempted to write any kids' songs? I have, actually. (laughs) Amazing! I have. I've I've got a folder. Well, I've written a couple of songs for my son. Mm. One that he liked and hated later. (laughs) And there are songs of mine that he likes mm. that are not necessarily written for him. And I used to kind of use them as a, like, okay, let me, if this guy likes it, then it's good. You yeah. know? Okay. You know, um, and, and the, there, there was a time I heard him talk about the seven seas. Oh, he was at a late, I'm like, oh, let me do a song for him. Mm, I don't like it. Mm. Like, oh, oh no. <laughs> uh, I don't like it. Like, okay, thank yeah. you. Oh, harshest but critic. I did a couple of kid songs uh, while I was in Canada to, to submit. I don't know if you know Super Simple Songs. Mm-hmm. It's a big, it's a huge channel. Mm-hmm. And they've got like a, a billion subscribers on YouTube. I wanted to be part of the channel. Yes. But it didn't work out. Most of the songs are more like localized. Nobody makes songs for kids, man. Yeah. It's such a, it's such a, it's like concerts, you know? Huh. We don't have enough Family-friendly concerts. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think there is a market for family-friendly concerts. You don't think of kids when we make music. Yes, you are speaking my language. I have you know, been thinking I think, about this. Oh, mm, as long as Tori is dancing, you know. But mm. kids love music. Yeah. And then they don't, they don't hear genre. They just hear music. Yeah. When you watch kids' shows, old kids' shows, Tom and Jerry, and you're like, it's big band. It's big band jazz. It's, you know. And you're like, wow, this was jazz? You didn't think of it as jazz when you were growing up watching it, you know. Kids do really, really, really appreciate music. Yeah. you Because it's music, you know. And like I said, they don't listen to it as, oh, it's house. Or to them, it's they're either dancing, you know, or entertained or not. I think we should think, think of kids even when we make songs. Even if they're not kids' songs. That is an interesting way to look at it. And I agree with you. There's so many of those kind of shows you do at like a market where you become background mm. music. But even though for the adults you're background, mm. right at the front of the stage, there's, there's always a kid. A kid there's always dancing. a kid dancing or paying attention. Yes. Paying attention like, what is this? Mm. Loving it. Reacting to it in however anyone else would have reacted to it. Yes. You know, there's never one reaction. It's never just dancing. It's always, sometimes it's just like wonder, like, Wow, this is interesting. You don't know what goes on in their head. Yes. But definitely kids' songs. We need to make more kids' songs. I think also when people think kids' songs, they they think infants. Mm. Baby shark, you know. It doesn't have to be baby shark. Yeah. It can be anything. It can be a song about broccoli. It's supposed to be positive. Maybe that's what we should collab on. Mm -hmm. We can collab on a kids' song because that's exciting. Mm. Moving on. COVID 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, Post-apocalypse. We <laughs> exactly. I know we were <laughs> speaking earlier um, about how, as Kwani experienced, you guys were setting up some shows and then the pandemic happened and everything got cancelled. What other challenges have you seen musicians facing over this last year? Oh, man. People have lost income, eh? Mm. People have, have lost income. But I think what's Admirable is that I know people who have lost income, but they've managed to salvage the situation as, as something good, mm. you know? And I think it kind of helps when you know that you're not the only one. Totally. You know, when you're like, okay, I'm not the only one. There's thousands of us that have lost out on income. So it kind of makes things better. You know, you don't feel like the, the only loser. 
<laughs> you know, but it, but it's that it's income, and it's because people have not been performing, and a lot of people make money from performance. Exactly. Some people have been performing, doing virtual shows. I've also seen that kind of take a strain on people, where they're mm. like, ah, uh, I know people that have done virtual shows, and they're like, ah, I'd rather not perform. Actually, I don't yeah. like this. You know, I where's the crowd? Exactly. And I think we never think of the crowd as part of the music, but the, the audience is part of the music. They may not be part of the process of making music, but once it's out there, you know, it's beautiful to perform to a crowd. It's not an ego thing, really. It's a, it's synergy, you know. It's you give them energy, they give you energy back. You know what I'm saying? And that's why songs are different at every performance mm-hmm. because crowds are different at every performance. Even if you bring in the same crowd, they'll come with a different energy. They'll come with a different vibe tomorrow. Yeah. And how you perform the song, the song will be. Again, crowds, audiences, underrated. I love that. I find the same thing. They feed me. Because we do music for them. Yeah. You know? And for us and for them and for us and them is us and us is, you know, it's like, we are lucky that we can make music, mm. you know? People who love music also have a passion for music. And there are those who know that they cannot become musicians. And mm. as long as they're around musicians or around music, that passion is fed, the thirst is quenched. It's that. Those are the challenges. It's people not performing. Yeah, man. It's just there hasn't been much live music this year. There's been a lot of releases though. Mm, and do you think that it is going to change the landscape of live music? Yes, definitely. I get a sense that people are hungrier now for music. Mm. I keep thinking of the first sound check. You know, like, oh, I can't wait. That first first sound check. Mm. I mean, shows are happening now, but we were on lockdown or under lockdown. I kept saying, man, when the festival season comes back, you need to be in there, you know? Yeah. I think we can do events as, as long as people are responsible, um, as long as organizers put in the measures to make sure people are safe. Mm-hmm. But there is only so much an organizer can do. If you are coughing, stay away. Yeah, I don't, understand. Don't go to a show, you know, wait until... You are not coughing. <laughs> you know, if you need to quarantine, quarantine. Obviously, it's different and it's going to be different for a while. But I don't know. I think we, I think the live couch is about to, to pop in a really good way. Technology has affected music just like COVID has. But mm. there are positive effects. There are, there are good ways that technology has affected music, the way we consume, the way we create music, the way we uh, showcase music. You know, I think things are going to get better. And we might have cleaner concerts now, <laughs> you know. <laughs> From your lips to God's ears. Yeah, I think I only have positive things. For me, the COVID situation just gave me time to work yeah. on myself, to work on my music. So, uh, you know, yeah, you don't get to see loved ones. We haven't gotten to see loved ones this year if they live far because of travel plans, etc. cetera. But we, I think we needed the pause as yeah. well. The world was just too fast. The world was just moving at a 240 kilometers per hour. It was oh. just like, so we kind of needed to sit and be like, wait. Yeah. Have some water. Relax. Think, you know. And the way I look at it is we have a head start now in terms of time, you know. Mm. And it's fine if you didn't work during lockdowns. If you were resting, that's beautiful. Yeah. I wish I had rested during yeah. lockdown more, you know. But I was just like, oh, time to work, you know. But if you were sleeping throughout the lockdown, that's good. Mm, energized now. Yeah, people need sleep. I need sleep. It's the one thing I haven't done properly in my life. It's a rest. I have to agree with you. And I, I feel like I've only learned very recently how necessary sleep is. Yeah, you get grumpy if you don't rest. Your body just can't regenerate. Exactly. Doesn't have enough time, doesn't get enough time to regenerate. I mean, there are people who can survive on like four hours of sleep, five hours, but there's a time when you just need eight hours. I think that I glamorized long, late nights and little sleep. I mean, I, I don't know what, it, culturally I have somehow glamorized it. But now, knowing what I know, I think it is the the easiest fix to... Uh, any mental health stuff mm-hmm. to any physical health stuff and any spiritual stuff. Exactly. It's a quick fix. Why do you think kids are always at the optimal? Nap time. <laughs> they get nap time and they sleep. Yeah. You know? 
dogs, they rest. They just like. And they're always friendly, right? I look at dogs and I'm like, <laughs> these mofos are living the, the best life, you know? Mm-hmm. They don't, there's no need to like stress out. And you think, ah, what's, what's there to stress about? You're just a dog, but they're cool. And it's because they nap. Yeah, they, in most cases, they do better than us. <laughs> <laughs> kind of as we wind down to the end of the interview, what is making music look like for you right now and what's in the pipeline for the short term? Making music for me right now looks a lot like me, my laptop, my monitors, and MIDI keyboard, percussion, just making music and microphone. You know, if I'm mm-hmm. not doing that, I'm... Um, they're recording other musicians, but that's a, that's a lot of me time. And now the focus is a lot on the solo efforts, you know, the solo work that I've been, that I've been doing. Mm-hmm. That's what it looks like right now. Nice. Um, and it also looks like exchanging files with band members, you know, da, 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 da. although I think we've also kind of come to a place where we've, we've glamorized that or see the beauty in exchanging files. I prefer just making music. If we're making music as, if there are two, more than two people mm. making music, I, I still prefer being in the same room. Mm. If I send you a song and you send it back in two weeks, yeah. you know, you can kind of lose that energy. No, and it's, it's exactly you know, what you were saying about it can, with an audience as well. Yeah, it can work out. You know, you, I can, you can send good files. I mean, I've had instances where files are like, oh, this is beautiful, this is bad. This human interaction is beautiful, you know? Yeah. Agreed. This online thing, as necessary as it is now, can't compare to being connected and face-to-face. Yeah, it's a convenience. We have the technology, you know, so it's, we use it, you know? We have the internet, we use it, you, you know? And, and I'm not speaking against it because... There was a time in 2002 when we couldn't do it. Yeah. You know, just like there was a time in 1985 <laughs> where, <laughs> or 1994 where r- writing to someone, the letter gets to them in two weeks yeah. or in a couple of days. Now you can, shoo, mm. you can shoot. I can write to you right now. You know, you're in Vienna and you can get the message right now. It's amazing. We're living in the future. It's amazing. So the Jetsons. Is there a song that you wish that you had written? Songs. Mm-hmm. These are songs I always go back to, or, or projects that I always go back to. You know, where I guess they are my favorite songs. I can give you a couple. Mm, two. One is a song called Zitini Zizwe mm. by Busim Shongo. Mm. The song called The, the Jungle Line by uh, Johnny Mitchell. Mm-hmm. Beautiful, beautiful. I think it's got like Rwandi, uh, drums from Burundi, vibes like that. And a synthesizer, it's like a crazy electro song. It's I don't know what that song is. It's just mm. like beautiful. There's a song by um pianist Tandin Tuli. She's a singer called Cosmic Light. Love the song. I wish I had written the song. Mm. I've never told her actually, but she'll find out. There's an album by Michelle Nijo Cello called The World Has Made Me the Man of My Dreams. I love the album. There are a couple of songs there that I I listen to. I'm like, oh my god, how did she do that, you know, if she is a pronoun she prefers, I don't know. A song called Headline, mm-hmm. and there's another one called uh, Michelle Johnson. Those two songs, I'm, I, ne- I always listen to those songs and I'm like, what the hell? And um, there's a song called Default by Atoms for Peace. There's a song that me and James used to enjoy driving called Empire Ends by Gorillas, <laughs> featuring uh, Little Dragon. Beautiful. Every time I listen to that song, I'm like, oh my word. I wish, I wish. It's giving me composer production envy, you know? I mean, say if you send me the names of those songs, I'll link them in the show notes so people can go and have a listen. There, you can start a playlist for the podcast. Yeah, that's a great idea. Oh, that's a really good idea, actually. I'll send you the songs. Yeah, thank you. So now um, a wish list collaboration, someone that you'd like to collaborate with that you haven't? That's for me to know and for you to find out. <laughs> well, I hope I do find out. <laughs> yeah, but we need to do a song together. Yeah, we're going to. Mm. There's so many musicians, you know, but I won't, I won't tell. Good. I won't tell. Good. Okay, so in light of everything we've spoken about, the good and the bad, 
mm-hmm. the challenges, the reasons, the callings. What advice would you give indie musicians who are still making music against all odds? Keep making music. And your first question was why? Mm-hmm. If you can answer that question for yourself, it seems like a small thing, but can go a long way. I used to hear in people or uh, older musicians saying, don't do it for the money, don't do it for the money, do it do it for the music. And I'd be like, why would I not do it for the money? Mm. I don't understand. I need money, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But I think it's an oversimplified statement, you know? There are layers to it. You can't do music just for the sake of music. The ripple effects can be great, can yeah. be amazing or not. Or 10 people can hear the song or and it can set, you know, like the story of... um. Rodriguez, mm, you yes. know the story. Just like a classic story, it's like the Rodriguez story is. I mean, I, I watched Sugar, Sugar Man, the, the the documentary. Yeah. But a few months ago, I watched a documentary called The Black Godfather. It's about Clarence Avant. He, he he was like this record label executive in in the sixties and the seventies. Rodriguez was on his label, mm. and it's funny because he. He spoke about this story later on. He was like, you know, when Rodriguez came out, people thought I was crazy. They were like, why are you recording this guy, man? This, why this guy? And he's like, people did not understand why I wanted to record Rodriguez. It's because I could see that this guy was super special. And he mentioned this, the South African story, how Rodriguez became huge in South Africa and no one knew, including himself. Mm-hmm. You know, he didn't know. You get stories like that. The band Black Jacks, they had a song called um, Lakeside. Mm-hmm. And, and I believe... In Mexico, I think there was a town called Lakeside where the song was loved. Just kind Amazing. of became, you know. So you you never know. You never know. It's just that sometimes there are no ways to judge or measure how far you, the impact you have on people. You'll find that people sitting with short cantori in China. <laughs> it's that. Just keep making music. Make music. Make more music. Make music. Just keep making music. There's a beauty to the indie spirit. There's a beauty to the DIY factor, you know, how we're doing it for ourselves. But there's a beauty in that. Yeah. I don't think we should lose any of that. There's a there's a badass thing to it. You know, just keep the indie spirit because it's true that the industry killed music. Yeah. Industry keeps killing music because the industry is a business. There's a bass player, Concord Ngabin there. I bumped into him one time and he was like, you know what, Kuala, man? I'm done with the music industry, but I'm not done with music. Mm. You know, the music industry can kill your soul. Because you think you haven't made it. I make music. We we did not get into music for the business. We got into music for music. Yeah. The business found us. You know, just because you didn't sell 10,000 copies doesn't make you less than. You yeah. know, everybody counts. Everybody has a role to play. This is why there's a song for every emotion in the world, for every situation. Any situation you can think of, there's a song for it. Yeah. So just keep making the music and see... You know what I'm saying? What happens? You know, just put your heart in it. You know, I think sometimes you put too much of our brains in it and it yeah. doesn't quite work out. But I believe in the heart. You know, just do it. Just keep making music. I love that you're speaking my language. Last thing. Mm-hmm. How can our listeners keep abreast of the things that you're doing um, and follow you? Are you on social media? I am on Instagram. As Quella the Fourth. I'm on Bandcamp, Quella.bandcamp.com or Gwenexperience.bandcamp.com. There's a something I started doing with applications now. You know when you applications for residencies, etc., they yeah. like list your social media platforms. I think that is is shit. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Tell me. You make music. I think organizers kinda wanna judge you by the numbers you have. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that for organizers, right? Mm. Cool. If you have if you can pull a crowd, you you get booked. But yeah. sometimes you don't get booked because you can pull a crowd and you've got the numbers. But it 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 got to that point where people, even in television, actors get hired because of the numbers they have. Mm. Your know, numbers will affect the ARs. But it's a disservice because there are good actors who don't have big numbers but yeah. they're good they in, they love their craft and they put work into it so for me i don't see why in, in an application they should say yeah what's your facebook what are you looking for if you're looking for someone's music yeah. you go to their spotify mm. you know you go to spotify they people have spotify artist accounts mm. you know just like people have user accounts you go wherever you want to go to title these are 
you know so i think these are things that must they should replace that should replace and i'm not speaking against social media you could have a stronger presence on instagram or twitter by all means put it put yeah. it put in an application if you have a strong twitter presence put it in yeah. but if you had to gauge between your twitter and your spotify put your spotify that's what you want to hear you want to see the person's music what if you don't post maybe you have 10,000 followers on facebook but you have not posted in 5 years yeah because you just don't feel like it but your music is still being listened to on spotify so i'm on instagram quite a lot of followers still trying to figure out what instagram means <laughs> to me you know yeah. i you know i know it's a picture sharing app mm. you know, but it's it's evolving into other things i'm on spotify as well or coin experience i think this is another thing that being a dad teaches you is just that things that matter and things that don't matter yeah you know i don't think it matters much you have a facebook i don't know yeah. what you want to see my status updates well what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a link in the show notes to the ones that you value and then people can go and listen to your music and hear all about when you're going to play your next show mm -hmm. and all of those sort of things that are important mm. and bring back the website bring oh, back yes. websites we should bring back website good idea yeah we're giving our numbers to these platforms do you have a website no <laughs> 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 i do have a website it's just it's not up because i'm trying to figure out where to go with it you know it was yeah. like my website was more based on my last ep mm. so now i'm like mm, it's also that it's like really i'm gonna pay subscription again like I, i understand why some people don't have websites it's like oh man i must pay this and pay that and at least for a domain you can pay once it's yeah. like a once-off fee you know but some things is like whatever if you if you are using squarespace or wix or whatever it's like some of these platforms you pay monthly and oh my it's gosh like, yeah okay i'm gonna pay monthly and uh, it's i mean it's a good investment it's a good thing to to consider but i think we should bring websites back mm -hmm. so everyone can have it like a virtual home your virtual home can be Facebook is Mark Zuckerberg's home. Yes, you are giving him the numbers, exactly what you said, that's right. You know what I'm saying? So I think you can still connect to those things, but I think we should bring back the website. Bring back, bring back the back website. The website. Bring yes. back the website, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I Let's had a website, quella.xyz, but I stopped it, like I said, a few months ago, but it'll come back. I'm still thinking about it. Yeah. yeah you know, this time it must be for good. Well, let's challenge each other to both work on our websites. Okay? Mm -hmm. We need a deadline. <laughs> we'll talk about it after the show. Thank you for coming. Thank you for the invite. Thank you for having me. It's been really nice to reconnect and we will collab. Yes, definitely. I see it. I hear it. It must happen. It will happen. Yes. If you are an indie artist whose passion for what you do can inspire or fuel others, get in touch. I'd love to chat. You can find me on Instagram at Shotgun Tori. You've been listening to another production from Solid Gold Podcasts. <laughs>